Our next story is about perseverance in life and on the basketball court. It's about Will and Joku. Will grew up in Halifax, went to school in Halifax, and played basketball, a star, an MVP with St. Mary's University. After graduating, he went to Europe and played some pro ball there, and then to the U.S. to play in the USBL, a semi-pro league. Our story starts with Will on the brink of his greatest moment in the sport, a shot at the NBA. We yelled and screamed and high-fived and high-balled. It was exciting. We'll come back with the 40th pick in a moment. Right now, we're already ready for the 41st, and that's Indiana's pick. You can tell all these folks here in Indianapolis are excited. Let's go to Rod Thorne. At number 41, the Indiana Pacers select William Najoku, St. Mary's of Canada. I think when he was about, oh, seven, eight years old, he towered above all the kids in his class. So his dad kept saying you know, to me that he's going he's gonna to play basketball someday. When me and Will first started playing in grade 10, we were pretty much even. But then, you know, towards the end of the grade 10 season, he just seemed to, everything started to click. His jump shot was a lot smoother. He had great back of the basket moves, and basically, he was unguardable. Well, St. Mary's, uh, I got my, like, 10 minutes a game, that type of thing, you know, went and did my time, but Will automatically started, and in his first year, he was MVP of the team. If there's anybody that's going to make it to the NBA, it's going to be William Njoku. Uh, Njoku just by virtue of the physical talents that he possesses. I mean, this is the NBA. How many guys get to a shot? at this level. From my background, from my situation, yeah. Canadian school, all that stuff, I mean... There's only like 900 guys every year travel for the NBA in the world. And there are only 350 make it. So, I mean, to be here and to have a shot like I have... Now, I know when he played in for, you know, the Team Canada, and he played in the USBL this past summer for the New Jersey team, they played him inside. Al Menendez. How are you doing? Where are you coaching? Uh, he's not, he's not going to survive in the NBA inside. He's not strong enough. He's not big enough. He's not mean enough. He's real athletic, and that was something that impressed us because, you know, we felt um, maybe with a year or two in Europe uh, that he would mature a little physically and, and uh, he'd be ready to you know, help us. We're a little disappointed because he's injured right now, but the worst thing we could do is rush him back and, and hurt his career. So, you know, we're just trying to be patient and, and hope he gets well. He's deficient in his quad quadricep. So what we're trying to do is we're strengthening the heck out of him here in camp. And uh, right now I'm working on some soft tissue release and break down some of the microspasms he's having. I didn't expect, you know, to not pass the physical. Hopefully by the, you know, middle of next week, he's ready to run up and down. You worried about losing any of your, uh, your touch? You haven't been, had your hands on the ball that much? Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, but that's that's with anything, you know, any sport. If you're off for a little while, it's gonna, you're going to be a step behind. And it's going to take a, a little while to get on the same page as everybody else. But Hello, fans. Hello there out there. Radio Land. <laughs> What a famous basketball player. Off of the Pacers? Really, what, what college did you get to? Went to college in Canada. 
Oh, yeah, it happens. It happens. <laughs> the person that asked me is, where'd you go to school? And I, went, I went to school in Canada. And St. Mary's like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then it stops there. Good luck. <laughs> I get excited knowing that so many people in Canada want me to do well. You know, that's what it's all about, just having a great experience. It's a great life experience, you know. It's a, it's a rare opportunity. Oh, basketball pictures. My little boy. Grew up to be a big man now. He's kind, he's considerate, he's generous, very, very thoughtful. Is that William? Yeah. <laughs> Did he consider going to school in the States? No. The reason was that, again, going back, I hate talking about death. <laughs> Just puts. Um, he finished high school in 89. His dad died in 87. Initially, I don't really think it hit me, you know? right away and I was just too young to really realize what was going on. In my culture, the oldest, you know, men, men, no matter where you are, men tend to be the ones who take charge of things. I had like 30-something scholarship offers out of high school. And it didn't feel right for him to leave us here and go away to the States? It's a big hole. It's like a, a big void, you know. And it's hard to it's it's hard to fill. It won't ever be filled, I don't think. But I mean, I've got my my mom and my sisters, you know, and we're close and stuff. So it, it's just it's life, and now uh, we just gotta keep plugging away and try to deal with it. This is the best thing I could be doing for my basketball career is to be here. I play at home and and. Uh, with the guys, we have good scrimmages and stuff, but I'm, I'm not pushed like I would be every single day here. You know, every day here I come to the gym and I'm gonna be challenged. And I think I think you need that in, in all parts of your life too, you know, and even in the workplace, you know, you gotta have something to, to push you and drive you to, to get better. When I was a little kid, I used to come watch William play. You still have a sore throat because you're always screaming and yelling, and you always ask people to go and buy your halls. Hi. Got a fight? Ooh, loud one, aggressive, a screamer. Number 55, Joku is getting lucky out there. So we just got to keep going. Okay, number two. Once St. Mary's made it to the CAAUs, Lawrence was there cheering his brother on. Because that's always been the case. We all just love to cheer him out, you know. My brother, the guy is just—he's just the. It's the funniest guy, nicest guy. Everybody liked him, you know. He had a lot of qualities that I wish I'd had, and he's my younger brother. My brother and my older sister have sickle cell anemia. It's a blood disorder. But my brother was in and out of hospitals ever since I can remember. They became good friends. They were yeah. very tight. One day he went into the hospital and then, and then he, just, he just passed. I really didn't have time to deal with it before I went overseas. He left soon after, I think about a week or two after that, to go to France, and it was it wasn't it was a bad it was bad timing. It was really hard, you know, to go by myself and try to, after that happened and try to deal with that stuff. And he went to withdrawal, grieving, and so it didn't work out. I remember we spent a lot of time on the phone talking about about it. I remember I had to be strong over the phone for his sake. And people try to tell me, well, you know, like, God, like, said it was time for him to go, but I don't really agree with that, you know, because, I mean, I could have used him more than, and my family could have used him around more than I think God would, you know what I mean? So it was just really frustrating to deal with. Hopefully by the, you know, middle of next week, He's ready to run up and down, but we want we want to make sure that he's got enough strength back in here before we let him back on the floor. I'm, I'm 
sure there's lots of people in the world that go have gone through some of the stuff I've gone through and have, have, have been able to plug away at it. And I'm sure there's people that haven't, but I don't want to be put in that category. I want to be able to I want to be a winner. Knowing him, he would do what he has to be done. He would go, he shoot, he play with them, hopefully, play well, do what he has to be done. That's it. I mean, I told him, whatever you do out there, I'm part of you anyway. If you make it, well, you make me happy. If you don't make it, I'm still happy no matter what. You come back, go to Toronto, go to Vancouver, it doesn't matter. But he has to be aggressive where he is now to make the big ones. Ha, 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 ha.